Bazaar is intended for mature, open-minded audiences only. If you are easily offended, we suggest you turn this wacky shit straight off. <laughs> Pissing the night away. <laughs> you know, <clears throat> I have uh, <laughs> started a new tradition. Sorry, I'm um, <clears throat> fighting off a cold. I hope I'm not getting a cold. No, it might be coming. Me. Well, I have been <laughs> I'm sidetrack because I'm stoned. <laughs> um, I I started doing this thing where uh, I will listen to last week's episode right like before we record. Mm-hmm. I listen to it on my drive home, and it gets me in a good mood for podcasting. Yeah, I, uh, I'm laughing, I'm having a good time, and uh, but I I'm often crunched for time, so I put it on 1.25. <laughs> I've never done that with ourselves. I've done you know, that with other people. It's pretty fucking great until you get to my theme song. And then it's like, it's me, oh, my Jimmy. God. <laughs> <laughs> well, no, because the, the, it's not – the voices don't sound sped up, but the beats do. Oh, that's do. right. Uh, they, they've done it in a way so it happen? doesn't speed up the voice. It, it must just, just skip over a couple frames instead of actually speeding it up, right? That must be it or something. Yeah. But, but it, it's very funny. It's, uh, it, 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 it's an interesting way to listen. I, sometimes I'll do that with podcasts just to catch up. It's not preferred. We yeah. sound really fucking brainy, though, because we're like, <laughs> <laughs> like the we have nothing way. but charming things to say <laughs> with rapid pace speed, Jay. Yeah. Yeah, well, I was cranking some Chumbawamba to get in the mood. That song never fails to pump me up. But it was funny. I was watching the video, mm-hmm. um, and for the first time, I noticed that Dan Burt is in drag. Uh, he's one of the ladies wow. in the bathroom putting on makeup. And I don't know why I never noticed that before. <laughs> He's in drag for a significant portion of that video. Damber No Bacon, uh, for those of you who don't know, lives in our neck of the woods, my neck of the woods. And he was on the show back in the day. Uh, it was a fun guest. Fun, interesting conversation about a weird, kooky, relatively unknown band, considering, considering that they've been around for 30-some years. Uh, they're on a hiatus right now. None of them really call it a breakup. Uh, I feel like the time is right for a Chumba Wamba. In fact, the reason I was yeah. listening to it is I saw a trailer, movie trailer, that used that song. I was like, nice. I haven't heard it in a while. It's good to see it. It always comes up in like sports uh, tracks, you know, like cutting out or into commercial. You know, I'll hear it. Right. Not so much football, definitely soccer and uh, basketball. Yeah, I, I guess you, uh, you don't want a theme song for the NFL to be, I get knocked down, <laughs> but I get up again. <laughs> I get concussed, <laughs> I knock <laughs> it up again. <laughs> you only get three and, or four, just five. Yeah. Entering into protocol. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'm glad they're getting a bit more serious about it. Yeah, I still okay. think they could be a, better. Did, but Did you see what happened with... Tua, the um, my, the Dolphins, the yes, new quarterback yeah. early in the year. Oh my God, I'm glad too. Like it's fucked up. But they, we talked about this. Wait, was that the one that like he just straight up stumbled and wobbled? Yes, you know? and then like and they still wanted to leave him, him around. Well, they took him back, and they're like, "He good." <laughs> they sent him back that... on the field. It was like it's fucking absurd. alarming. It's absurd. Yeah, but uh, did, uh, maybe we touched on this, but they had those new helmets for preseason. Like they were called the Guardian helmets. Did you see those? I don't think we've talked about this, but fuck. So they put they. I, I guess it was like the test run, but they. And I don't know the details. I'm I'm just talking about what I've heard. I've not read up on this, so I'm only talking about things I've heard. But there are these helmets. You I've seen them. I don't know. Fucking pull, pull them. Or just Google Guardian helmet NFL, and you can see they look a bit wonky. But you know, I imagine this is like V V one. Yeah. <laughs> they look uh, like you know the you, you know like like children's helmets almost because they're like extra padded on the outside. But apparently, they reduced the shit out of concussions. <laughs> like, like they, it's got to be the way we go oh, somewhere. Okay. Yeah, it is. Like the padding is on the outside. Yeah. Um, yeah, they could they could probably work on that and make it a little. Slicker. You know what? Doesn't it kind of look? If you look at the white one, I see I, an angle. It reminds me of NFL helmets of old days, like the weird mm-hmm. ones you used to see. Yeah, or some sort of hockey like goalie. Yeah, they just got to find a way to make it not look dumb, and uh, I uh, think that's great. I, I do understand. <laughs> Boy, they do look dumb. It's a whole different thing seeing it actually on somebody. I'm scrolling down. The first few shots are just yeah, it's, product shots. Yeah, it's not shot. good, right? And it's then scrolling not... down, it's like... <laughs> <laughs> yeah, <laughs> bad. <laughs> that's right out of Spaceballs. It's, it, it, is, it doesn't look like it's a new helmet. It looks like it's literally something that goes over the old helmet. 
and that's what makes it ridiculously large. Uh, says Kevin. Yeah, they just by twenty percent, like a significant enough amount where they got to figure they got to figure that out. Yeah. I, I love the NFL. I'm really passionate about football. I really hate what it does to people. <laughs> you know, yeah, it's not. You just fuck your body up, man. I don't know. Yeah, and there's there's a lot to the uh, concussion thing. As someone who lived through one concussion, I can't. I, like it terrifies me the thought of life giving me another one. Like, well, what <laughs> what will happen then? Because um, one was fucking traumatic, and you know, almost a decade later, I'm still feeling the fucking <laughs> concussion repercussions, and I, it it changes you forever. It literally can remap your brain, and we we know that it can psychologically change people into and leading into depression and sometimes suicide, sometimes homicide. Like it changes people's mentalities, and we hear all these stories where it's like he was fucking fine and normal, never hit his wife, never drank alcohol, and then he just became a wife beating alcoholic and murdered his whole family. And after five concussions, no one's surprised. <laughs> It's just like, yeah. it, and that's that's nothing, uh, especially in the old days, you know. And a lot of those people didn't live long lives. <laughs> Between that and the steroids that used to, I know they're still steroiding, but some of the shit that they're pumping into their <laughs> bodies back in the day. Whew. Yeah, that's yeah. right. It's fucking crazy. I don't know. Sports are nuts. <laughs> it's and another thing about football. Like I know we don't have a fucking great huge fan base, football fan base here, but like I keep thinking I know a shit about football. And then I just get rocked by something that feels basic. <laughs> and I'm like, oh, my God. Yeah. <laughs> There's just so much to it. It's a simple yet complex sport. All the good ones are, you know. There's a, there's a lot of little things that add up to it. And uh, that's what makes it so great. Uh, we Indeed. don't get tired of it, even though it's literally watching the same thing over and over and over and over again. You just never know which way it's going to go. And that one exciting play. Yeah, it's hard to explain. It really is hard to explain any sport to a non-sport fan. Mm -hmm. It's kind of like explaining music. Sure. How do you even yeah. do it? Like, well, listen to it, and if you don't you feel like it, it, I think we're done. Yeah. I think the discussion mm -hmm. is over. Um, well, Lyle, unfortunately, is not answering. He has not been feeling well. Did you see his text? He's still at the hospital. Oh, I did not see that. He said he's not going to make it. Oh, shit. I didn't realize he was <laughs> at the hospital when he sent us the first one. Uh, damn. All right, we, should, we should clarify. He's not going to make it. To the podcast. Oh, yes. <laughs> Jesus Christ. I'm sorry. Wow. <laughs> Apologies. So he must have been in dialysis and his, yeah, I think there, his having a blood pressure is issue. too low or his heart yeah. rate is too low or something. And so they got to get that regulated. You know, as Lyle's talked about ad nauseum, um, dialysis itself can fuck you up and kill you. It's, it's a constant battle of dialing it in just so that they don't take too much, that they don't throw your electrolytes all out of whack, your blood pressure. It's so many things are controlled by your kidneys that you wouldn't think. No, hopefully uh, well, he will be fine and home very yeah. soon. Uh, it's just part of what he has to fucking go through. He's been doing pretty well. You know, it's easy to sometimes forget how sick he still is. And then we get yep. these little reminders every now and again, and it's just like, you know, don't take him for granted. Don't take it's anybody for granted. Yeah. Uh, but, yeah, scary. It's going to be fucking scary until he gets that fucking organ. Yeah. But you know what? I have seen, and I, I've talked to Lyle, but, well, I think I mentioned it on the show, I've seen a few people in my uh, peripheral connectivity, not people that I really know, but I've seen, I've been able to see their stories on Facebook, and uh, they got... They got the organ. One of them was a kidney. One of them was a liver. And they got what they needed. And suddenly they're just out doing all the things. Uh, and they just walked out. One of them was a kid that I went to school with in any app. He was on dialysis for, I think, 15 years or some shit, which is a lot for someone who's younger than me. And he just got a, a kidney, and it took. And he the, it was a really cool shot his mom posted on Facebook of all these boxes of equipment and supplies that you need to he was doing home dialysis and so he didn't need them anymore so they're loading them all up to get shipped back to uh, go somewhere where they're needed and what a fucking feeling that must be you know after uh, going through all that shit and 
I can't wait for the day where our buddy Lyle gets to experience that. That will be a day of celebration. <clears throat> Indeed. Yeah, agree. Um, I think John Mark is going to be a little bit late, too. I just got some the news stories that we didn't get to last time around. I don't know if you wanted to bag news quiz. Doesn't really or weird triv doesn't really work as well with two, <clears> but uh, I however agree. you want unless, to play uh, it. Unless you know someone that uh, wants to hop on. Wants to hop on. I'll think about that. Uh, I said light my pipe. So uh, I saw that the kid was sick. Uh, y'all Fuck, got cold. Dude, let me tell you, I've been actually good, <clears throat> uh, but he had the flu, like bad fever flu. And it was fucking scary. Like I got one one oh three at one point and I was like, Ooh. and then uh immediately some Tylenol took it down. But he's been sick and his mom was sick before that, and then I took him over to his mom's dropped him off and then she got way more sick. <laughs> I'm like, Oh my god, it's like the plague house over there. Yeah. Uh, so I've got the kid now, he's still he's on the uh he's laying down. Like he's just been like cuddly and all all he wants to do is watch movies and cuddle and I'm like, This is pretty great. Yeah I'm into this, you know? It can be uh as long as you know the sickness stays pretty mild sometimes. Uh, it, okay. it can be I, a actually, bit of a blessing. Yeah, for sure. Although that doesn't sound like a blessing back there at all. Yeah. Doing great. <laughs> <laughs> Hashtag blessed. <laughs> mm-hmm. He's like, suck on this blessing, bitch. Logan, you want to say hi to Uncle Ronnie? No? Okay, cool. <laughs> all right, well, I'm going to blame that on the sickness. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> oh, yeah, he's sick as fuck. <laughs> Straight up said, now. <laughs> Yeah, it didn't sound like it was through the watching, sound of he's, misery. Uh, he's he's watching Iron Man one on on my screen. So let me know if that's well, too loud. I can't by the fucking way, fucking compete with Tony Stark Dude. for God's sake. No, who could? I was just reading an interesting article with uh, <laughs> your uncle Ronnie builds robots too. You want to see him? <laughs> we got one in a Ziploc bag in the junk drawer. <laughs> <laughs> when did it come together, Dad? <laughs> <laughs> this looks like a nightmare. Who died in our drawer? Uh, I was watching a uh, reading an interview with Tony Stark himself, Robert Downey, and uh, he was talking about he was kind of responding to i guess quentin tarantino kind of went on a little rant about the marvelization of cinema these days which uh i think as you might know i'm kind of on that team because it's like if you got nine screens in your cineplex and eight of them are all marvel movies what aren't we seeing he was basically he was kind of agreeing with it but uh you know saying uh defending it to some degree too i thought it was interesting that he didn't just full on go Fuck that I, I just don't. Guy. I I understand the sentiment there, but mm-hmm. the logic is so fucking backward. Like, there's never more than one Marvel movie at the theater at a time. It, I mean, they release one a quarter or one every six months. You know, yes, they kill it every fucking time, but there's never like more than one. You know, there's not like mm. you, you know what I'm saying. Unless he's my, saying like that was my way of phrasing saying, it. Like, like go oh going to the theater and like five of the screens are reserved for Iron Man six. <laughs> well, <laughs> let's showed. say and that ha- that happens. Uh, well, okay. not five, but uh, f- yeah, they they literally buy the theater. Um, mm-hmm. You remember uh, Michael when he was up here for uh, Dude Bro Party Massacre? He was talking about uh, <laughs> anyone can do this if they want to pay the money uh, for walling a theater. It's of course when you're a studio. Um, you you can four wall the entire fucking block if you want, but yeah, it's not, it's not so much that well you got Iron Man three in one screen and Guardians five or whatever in uh, down the hall, but it is the fact that these movies stay in the box office like or they oh. stay uh, on those screens mm-hmm. for like sometimes three months and you know the entire summer and. Mm-hmm. So that is still hogging real estate, and it's just there's never not that franchise there. Mm-hmm. And in terms of studio, they, they used to they used to sort of had to dole this out, and there was a lot of mob mentality aspects to early Hollywood because of this, because it was that important to have your foothold in these theaters. You can only sh- show so many movies and so many screens over so many days, and so. But I think Tarantino's rant it it was a little bit of that that's my biggest beef with it i don't give a shit what's out there put it all out there and let people pick and choose i don't care what people go see any more than i care what's on pop radio you know it's not for me and so i don't go down that world but i'm not gonna sit here and mope that my favorite bands aren't on top 40 radio you know it's just a different thing um 
but I do, I, I think that a lot of his, you know, when people start weighing in that it's not auteur stuff, that's where I get a little eye roll. It's like, well, who fucking cares? Half the shit that was always coming out of Hollywood, most of the shit that was always coming out of Hollywood was not auteur stuff. You know, I mean, Indiana Jones, the fucking thrill ride. Star Wars, it's a thrill ride. You know, we can pick them apart in an auteur sense if we want to, but you could do that with Guardians of the Galaxy. You can talk about the special effects. You can talk about the props. You can talk about the acting. The score, it's all the same craft. So I don't i don't get on that much uh, of the rant. I just feel like <clears throat> it's kind of fitting, actually, that these big conglomerate, uh, conglomerate companies are comic book companies because <laughs> this is what got me out of comic books in the 90s. Uh, we went from this era where you could walk into, you know, a comic shop and you'll see your Marvels and your DCs and then a few Dark Horses and then a few Image, a few of these little indie books and then some really kooky indie shit. And then all of a sudden, well, why should we have one Batman book when we can have two? And then I don't know how many Batman books are going at any given time these days. You know, you got like Detective, you got Batman, you got like all these other uh timelines and spinoffs that that's been happening for decades in comic books but it achieved the same effect the same annoying effect to me which was well now all of a sudden you have 20 marvel and dc books on the shelf instead of five or six and then it, it's literally down to space well there's no room and then there, all of a sudden there's no market because they they're never put on the shelves and then it just kills it it's it's very, uh, it's not a monopoly, but it's something along that line. You know, it's a, it's just typical conglomerate, big business market share horseshit. And I don't, I don't ever like to see it. And, but it is kind of fitting that the one, the, you know, that all of this is happening based on the comic book industry because they were kind of the kings of it. Uh, and that is ultimately what chased me away from my funny books, which I used to be, uh, I used to live for, you know, <laughs> you know, anywho, um, ultimately none of these are life or death scenarios, but I feel like someone was talking the other day, you know, every, oh, I know what it was. I, so I just did an art market. Um, I don't know if I was talking about that last time. The timeline's all messed up. This last week was fucking bananas, but I, I was part of this little uh, sort of art market on the street and it was a huge success and uh, and I sold a bunch of little stuff you know made a couple hundred bucks definitely well worth my time but more importantly just hundreds of people came to this thing and which is a huge success for a first time thing but I had all these conversations and some people that were related to the guy that owned the drive-in and all the other theaters here in town uh, was asking if I still had the drive. You know, I made a little replica sign of the drive-in. It sold in like five minutes, so that was long since gone. They were asking if I still had it available, but we that started a conversation. It's like, yeah, everyone wants the drive-in to come back. That one's never going to come back because he won't let it. Um, but I keep thinking there's some piece of technology that's just right around the corner that is going to make movie watching a completely different thing in a communal experience. Something where you won't need a big screen. You won't need even a big room. You can maybe do a pop-up drive-ins here and there without having all that equipment. It'll definitely be something, probably a combination of projection, 3D type stuff. Um, I don't know what it is. <laughs> I don't know what it looks like. But I do feel like technology, as far as watching movies goes, hasn't really advanced as much as a lot of other things have around it. So I feel like there is going to be something special coming that might bring back some of that. Um, I can I can half picture it, some sort of futuristic thing, where you could just do a a floating screen in the middle of nowhere and do a pop up drive in. People do that, but you got to get that giant inflatable screen. You got to get the sound system. You know, I think there's something around the corner that might make that a bit more practical, and I think that that could actually revolutionize a new independent film movement because they got no play <laughs> in today's modern uh, society in the theaters dealing with Marvel or any of the other studio shit for that matter. Yeah. Hey man, speaking of uh, you selling your shit, 
Your um, Dick Striven thing was great. These little marquees and false, like false buildings you've been doing are fantastic. Mm, thanks. You know that uh, the Dick's Burgers <laughs> eat a whole bag of dicks. That was a commission by our Ben. I saw him post photos. Hey, do you think you could do the front of the castle if I commissioned you to? I, well, I definitely could. Um, Want me to send you some photos? Yeah, sure. I think I, that would make a lovely gift for someone. I'm getting better at the facades. That's that's kind of the harder part is doing yeah. some of the facades. But I've been wanting to do more of that uh, too because I'm working on the – you remember that big shoe sign in Wenatchee? The, well, it's not all yeah, that I big, do. but the, mm-hmm. I'm working on that. But the whole structure really relies on at least a little bit of the building. So I'm getting more into building – Building the buildings. But yeah, I'd love to take a stab at the uh, the old barcade. It's funny because the two windows on the front are octangular. Yeah. Uh, and I, easier to... <laughs> well, not only that, but they're covered in the vi- this vinyl right now. I had, had them covered in this. I designed the cover for it. And it's like a picture of everyone. And I have that art I can send you to print out and put over the little windows and everything. Oh, that's like, awesome. And, you know, so it'd look pretty accurate. Legit. <laughs> Hello? Yeah, you having yeah. tech troubles, John Mark? Can you can you hear me? Mm-hmm. Oh yeah, baby, loud and clear. Yeah, uh, yeah, it was it was not letting me talk. I'm like, hello, hello, I have an idea. Hello. <laughs> oh, I saw you there, but it it said you were muted. So. Yeah, it was. I was unmuting and muting and going back and forth, enjoying the call and. Hmm. Well, you finally worked. Now Anyways, you, now's uh, your chance. Weigh in. Um, I was thinking like maybe uh, they could do it with like you know how they have those drone fireworks and stuff now. Hmm. Which are getting maybe, incredible. Uh, maybe they could do it with like some kind of like drones with LEDs that you could like use the drones to make like a screen in the sky. You know what I mean? Oh. And get, then have, get a have the giant LED uh, screen. Yeah. Yeah. That's that basically kind of, what they do in Vegas in that. Yeah. Uh, it could move around and you could have like moving sh- shit on there. I, I, I don't know. I don't I, think it's there yet, <laughs> but I think it's possible. You know? I was combining the old and new technology with where you were going. I was thinking, we'll just get four drones. To hold a corner of the, the giant screen, <laughs> they just float in the sky instead of having to rent that big machine. But no, suppose... you could have like you know, you know how they have those big screens up like on the casinos and stuff. It's all LED lights, you know. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Um, and they they could like attach something it's to really the drones that when you when you had them in formation, it would make the screen. You know what I'm saying? Well, like I said, if you think about how far, yeah, we've we've had 3D and 4K, and we've had some advancements, but in terms of how films are really thought about and how films can be watched uh, hasn't been a huge leap into beyond just sitting in a room with uh, watching a screen or in a parking lot watching a screen. You know, uh, some variation is coming. Uh, I can just feel it in my bones. Anywho, um, oh, John Mark just texted. <laughs> Won't let me talk. That's funny. That was even your text got delayed on my end. Anywho, yeah, well, what the hell's going on? Should we get on to some of my news? Sure. Uh, maybe Lyle will be able to make it. Probably not. Looks like he might have to stay uh, most of the evening. Hopefully he can go home tonight. Poor guy. Um, so the World Cup is happening, obviously. And there has been, I don't know if you guys have followed some of the controversy, but Qatar is, you know, a pretty Oof, brutal. Pretty, pretty brutal. <laughs> yeah, brutal is a good mm-hmm. word for it and very strict in a lot of conservative ways, and that has ruffled some feathers. But I just came across this list. Uh, This was collected by GQ of all of the things that Qatar actually banned, specifically for uh, the FIFA. And I thought I would go through these really quickly. So pork is banned in all of Qatar. It's an, and no pork based items will be on the food menu, you know, ham, bacon, sausages, uh, only meat that is considered halal will be served. I don't find that too shocking. Um, if you know you have a country that is largely religious based and this is their biggest religion, there is. I want to be clear. Like I'm not. <laughs> I'm not saying that this country is fucked in the head for having all these rules. Different f- places have different things, and I do believe that when you go into a, a, co- a country. You are a guest, and you should be respectful of those rules. If you hate those rules, you probably should just stay home. And if you really hate those rules, yeah, you're welcome to try to boycott or um, even protest or uh, revolutionize it. But, uh, you know, that's on you. Uh, you're, you're fighting up against a current. 
And that's one that I think isn't that crazy, except when you think about soccer is not all that different from from football or baseball. And you're going to have hot dogs and, you know, all of those snacks and beers and all that stuff. Well, not beers, (laughs) because that, too, is off the menu. Uh, That's not the next one. Let me jump down to that since I led right into it. Uh, Uh, Balloons and inflatable balls have been banned in the stadiums. Yeah, that's not going to bug me. Uh, Musical instruments that cause loud noise. I don't mind that either. Cigarettes and vapes also prohibited. That's not a surprise. But alcohol, again. No baluzelas. Yeah, uh, or nose trumpets. But, you know, alcohol is a massive part of stadium life. So that is an interesting one. But here's what's even more interesting. Uh, I I saw a couple of stories that that said that uh, you can get alcohol if you get one of the super expensive sweets, but some of the stories made it look like women aren't allowed in those sweets. I don't know about that one one hundred percent, but you can get alcohol if you are in one of those spendy sweets, which I thought was kind of interesting. They'd make an exception when uh, <laughs> just for a little bit more money. Spectators will have to dress modestly which, again, is different for these crazy... The fucking soccer fans are insane, man. Um, And ensure that their shoulders and knees are covered. Um, Spectators are not allowed to remove any items of clothing once they get in. None of that trickery. Or otherwise remain in a state of undress. No taking your shirt off and twirling it, that sort of thing. There's been a lot of arrests of people doing that, probably just because that's what they're used to at a fucking wow. soccer match. Uh, yeah, straight up uh, uh, arrested. Here's interest, an interesting thing about the, the whole of Qatar. If you're traveling to Qatar as an unmarried couple, you and your partner are apparently not allowed to share the same hotel room. I'm not sure how they go looking into this, if they require proof of... A wedding certificate, a wow. marriage certificate, I'm not sure. Um, same-sex relations between men can lead to punishments like imprisonment and deportation. Same-sex relations between women are also not permittable, but it seems like they don't have quite a stiff a penalty. <laughs> but they'll let it slide. Because <laughs> that's kind of hot. <laughs> yeah, that gets me excited. <laughs> it's always a, a interesting thing growing up in a very conservative region with conservative people around me like uh could be completely anti-gay but they see a couple chicks making out and suddenly "Eh, we can at least watch this they can't have it both ways (laughs) y'all uh he's tried (laughs) yeah i tried um finally a little something that men don't get away with though uh as much as the ladies i think that's kind of refreshing uh (laughs) <laughs> addendum to that little law no pride flags which uh shouldn't surprise given what i just read and finally no holy books of any kind mm, so there you have it i do think that it is ultimately our responsibilities to know uh the rules of the road before we head into any of these countries uh middle east i think we all would I, wouldn't we all just automatically be a little bit more careful <laughs> In my lifetime, the Middle... Well, in my lifetime, Jesus Christ, going back to Jesus Christ's lifetime, the Middle East has been a very challenged, uh, rough place. And it's just... I don't know if I was going to go to any of those fucking countries. Now's not the time to protest. Uh, I'd probably just not go (laughs) because I'm a terrified American. A lot of that might be propaganda, but this does seem unusual. Some of these... I mean, for us... Anywho, uh, here's something to think about next time you uh, talk about what the perfect partner looks like. Here's the headline. Wife hires three presentable mistresses on 342-pound wage uh, to keep her husband happy. This is actually really interesting. So after after suffering from an illness... A woman in Thailand is hoping to hire mistresses for her husband who still has a, quote, high drive and lots of energy, unquote. Pathima... Oh, it sounds amicable. <laughs> it sounds perfectly generous. <laughs> uh, Pathima Chaman, 44, has shortlisted uh, two candidates so far. 
She has been advertising for the role with videos and revealed she has shortlisted two women. Oh, this is kind of like repetitive. Speaking from her Bangkok apartment, she said she has not been sleeping with her husband and it makes her feel like a bad wife. She has sent out a call for young single women with a college diploma and has offered a wage of 340 uh, two pounds, the region's minimum wage as the salary for the services. Pathima said, my husband has been working hard alone and I just want him to be happy. I will also have friends to be with at home. Goes on to say, the candidate should not have a child as it will become a burden. <laughs> Heard Indeed. that. Uh, mm -hmm. They have to look presentable and communicate well. It is important that they can please my husband physically. He is a man and needs that. He <laughs> still has a high drive and lots of energy. Sorry, some of this is uh, poorly written and repetitive. Um, mistresses must be able to keep him company and entertain him, so they must have good personality and be fun. She also revealed that she has been struggling recently with chronic depression. And this is the reason behind her wanting to find some extra help in the household. She added, I wanted to find mistresses for my husband as I am struggling physically with chronic depression and I feel I can't take care of my husband well. The women will also be treated like family and work in our company like family. I was shocked when I found out about that. Other men that wish to be like me should communicate with their wives about it. This is the man talking, sorry. Uh, I was shocked when I found out about that. Other men that wish to be <laughs> that wish to be like me should communicate with their wives about it. Good luck, dudes. Uh, listen, listen, I'd like a concubine, all right? <laughs> you can, you can broach it, but <laughs> do broach care. <laughs> they should ask their wives, he goes on to say, for permission so there won't be any problems in the future. I never wanted to have any mistresses, but since my wife is offering, comma, I won't reject. <laughs> this is really fucking interesting to me. Oh, wow. We talked about this. This comes up a couple of times where I, I always wonder, I've never been in this situation, but I wonder what people do or what they try to do when you're in a, a committed relationship, monogamous relationship, and then suddenly a change in the relationship happens and this one person no longer wants to be sexual at all. What does the other person do? Just suck it up and deny themselves a pretty important part of life, not just the pleasure of sex, but you know everything else we get out of it. Um, it it's a tricky fucking thing, and I don't think there's one size fits all solution. But here you go. Here's one possibility, and I think that this <laughs> woman, God bless her. I mean, she's she's struggling she's ill she's going through some chronic depression and she feels like she's not living up to what her role as a wife is that's that's pretty fucking heavy just what she's going through and i'm curious to get like a follow-up on this a year down the road once the uh the couple of mistresses join in on this team and see see where they end up i hope all the best for both of them yeah, well, no doubt. All five of them. Mm. Um, <laughs> and from the Partner of the Year Award to possibly the worst partner, Ev. Uh, fellas, if you are having trubs, <laughs> getting or keeping the old soldier at a tench during a uh, session of Love Make, there are, in fact, things you can try and or take. Do not do <laughs> what this woman did to her boyfriend when he was having the strugs. This is straight off the mirror. I'm just going to read the whole thing. This, uh, brace yourselves here. A man may never be able to use his penis again after oh his... God, that's a fucking awful way to start the story. <laughs> yeah, everything else. Well, believe it or not, it gets worse. <laughs> <laughs> uh, after his partner accidentally, I question that word here, oh, used no. expanding foam inside his urethra in their efforts to keep him erect during sex. The U.S. patient, 45 years old, was struggling with impotence and had been putting different items into the opening of his penis in a bid to stay firm. But this latest attempt ended in horror when his partner <laughs> tried to use, again, brace yourself, <laughs> the straw 
of a can of insulation spray to keep him erect. So Wait, did she spray it in him? Well, I believe what they were trying to do was simply use the straw, which, by the way, folks, is usually removable. Wait a second. <laughs> no, no. It attached to the uh, can of insulating Wait, foam. Just inserted it and was like, well, it's time to pull it out. <laughs> and she just grabs it by the fucking trigger. And trigger. <laughs> probably exactly i went down the unidentified oh, wow. partner said she accidentally hit the button on top of the can sending the foam into his penis where it hardened immediately and became anchored to his genitals <laughs> she's like success i'm <laughs> sorry i'm gonna jump on this it's like look I this sucks but i uh, can't wait to... <laughs> like i think we can both agree this here's an a medical emergency but uh <laughs> Let's utilize it and then get help, huh? Doctors, again, <laughs> brace yourself. It does just kind of get worse and worse. Doctors had to cut a new opening between the man's scrot and his anus for him to urinate and said he must pass a psychiatric test in order to qualify for reconstructive surgery. I don't know what that's about. I I think that this guy needs to see a shrink no matter what after this experience, I mean, but I don't know why you need that. fucking dignity. <laughs> Some things cannot be rebuilt. <laughs> Fail. Uh, scans revealed. Now, there are photos. I'm not going to send you. I did want to assault you guys, but you can look this up. The, the, the pieces that they pulled out look like flaming hot Cheetos. <laughs> They're blood-tinged, flesh-tinged. Uh, misshapen <laughs> oblong chunks of hardened foam extrusions oh jesus christ uh scans revealed <laughs> several masses of hardened mm. foam measuring up to four inches long and the man was rushed into surgery medics managed hey. to remove the foam from inside his bladder went all the way up uh but the procedure on his penis proved more complex Doctors initially approached the task by trying to grab the foam and pull it through the penis using specialized tools. <laughs> uh, the, we're going to need the uh, number six foam pullers here. Uh, but this proved impossible, and the team were forced to carry out perennial urethostomy, creating a new hole. It's basically like a tracheotomy for your newt. Uh, creating a new that's what hole. Happened. That's that's what our dog has. Oh Jesus Christ! <laughs> <laughs> Even Literally. a dog shouldn't have to suffer yeah. this. Yeah. Between the scrotum and the anus to extract the remaining foam. To complicate matters, the man also suffered from urethral stricture disease, where the urethra, where the, where the, <laughs> that's this is hard to say, <laughs> where the urethra scars and narrows. Due to this condition, the scar tissue anchored the foam in place and meant it was impossible to remove through the penis. In an alternative op, <laughs> surgeons created a new hole behind his scrotum to expel the, the urine, diverting his original urine stream away from his penis, never even gets to his dick. Three tubes were then put in to help him urinate following the operation, which was an initial success. The man is set to have more surgery to repair his urethra, but as I mentioned, he has to pass a psychiatric assessment first. I'm not sure what that's about. Uh, maybe to see like if this is all a waste Make of time. Make sure he's not going to do that again. <laughs> yeah, if, he, if he's not just crazy for trying this. But Jesus Christ, son, the ev pills exist. Or just go down. <laughs> just, just entertain the gal. You know, there's other things you can do. Um, good God. Or at the very least... Take the straw off the can. <laughs> uh, I thought that was incredible. I could not wait to bring that one for y'all tonight. And then if you are up for the photos, good luck. They're out there. Um, <laughs> they do look like flaming hot Cheetos, though. Uh. Mm -hmm. uh, Chris, are you there? I see you're muted. I want to make sure you're here for this one. <laughs> hmm. I'm here. Something I'm to, does it have something to do with fish? I'm sure, making the kitchen. sure does. I, I'm not here. See it. <laughs> <laughs> oh, it's kind of cool though. Uh, a massive shark grave uh, graveyard actually was just found near India. A team of scientists have discovered an ancient shark graveyard teeming with teeth 
hidden over 5,000 meters below the surface of the Indian Ocean. Some of the teeth are thought to be millions of years old and may have belonged to the direct ancestor of the Megadalon shark. As reported by I Fucking Love Science, marine scientists made the find while conducting a biodiversity survey around the Cocos, the Cocos Island? Cocos Island? Cocos Island? Uh, in a remote part of the Indian Ocean. During the voyage, the crew dropped a weighted net from, from the side of the research ship. Investigator to dredge... Oh, the research ship was called Investigator. <laughs> to dredge material from the ocean floor. According to a post on the Australian Commonwealth Scientific and Industrial Research Organization website, despite only sampling a small area of the seabed, the crew were surprised to discover a haul of over 750 shark teeth, some of which, again, are many millions of years old. And while the teeth discovered in the grave didn't belong to the Megadalon, the uh, Megalodon, am I saying that right? <laughs> I, never, I think I always say it wrong. Megal right? Megalodon. Megalodon. I think, yeah. The researchers do believe that they belong to its direct precursor, a shark that grew to around 12 meters in length. What do you think about that, Chris? You on team that? Does that at least sound kind of you know, cool? No. You know, no. Not even a little. Mm. I mean, like, no. Hmm. No, I mean that's cool. Think of all not around now. Think of everything that those teeth chewed on in uh, <laughs> over the last. Uh, I gotta say, more than any comment <laughs> that I personally got from last week's mm -hmm. episode, including a text I literally just got about fifteen minutes ago while we were recording. Uh, people Dude. were very captivated with Chune. They're uh, they're on <laughs> Team Chune. Didn't one of you look it up to see if it? I did. It, is it Somebody... kind of a real word? I think it is kind of a real world, real, real, real word. Yeah. One of those that. Real uh, world. <laughs> yeah. I think John Mark said it. Uh, you couldn't play it in Scrabble, but it's there. Probably like a whole nother tune. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's good shit. Um, I was thinking uh, these AI photos that everyone's posting. I don't know what yeah. your guys' feed looks like, but mine were oh, yeah. all headshots about the first day, day and a half. Seen a bunch. Yep. Now yeah. it's all everyone doing it to their nudes. <laughs> I am on team that. Have you guys experienced oh, no, this in your feeds? No. I wish so I many friends that. just post their titties and like full on nudes no. of themselves being uh, yeah, reworked by AI. And I thought, I wonder if the person who invented this app <laughs> ultimately saw that coming. Okay. You smell the controversy with this, though, right? Um, it, w w with what? So apparently, the app, John Mark probably knows more about this than I do, but I, the app steals a bunch of art, basically. Like it scans a bunch of copyright oh, artists' art and use that. and uses that to generate these images. So, mm -hmm. so there's a lot of like <laughs> it's just taking people's art and combining it, and I don't know about the okay. fucking details, but. It was really fascinating to see the, um, the, the, I mean, read read about that. It was like, holy yeah, shit! Yeah, it's, it, it's 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 not it, it's not and the AI coming up with shit on its own. It's basically remixing stuff that already exists. That makes sense. And if you um, if you look closely, a lot of these things you can see the corners where the original artists had their signature but it's all fucked up you know like how the hands are fucked up and stuff there's yes. like the signatures are in there wow but they're all fucked up because the ai doesn't know what to do with it so it's like you can see where there was a signature but it's all garbled you know oh, i'm, I'm um, gonna have to look this up and talk yeah, about so it for the next comment i didn't know this yeah 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 L look into it yeah so it's literally I, just stealing art and uh morphing your photo yep. into it for the well, most that makes part, sense I, because I was wondering where are they getting, well, like, why this design? Like, some of them look sort of medieval. Some of them look, like, a lot of it does look like pop art. I saw uh, somebody posted a meme along the way that said these AI creations just look like all of the shitty art that no one wants to buy it on Venice Beach. <laughs> and I think a lot of it was. This is like a lot of it is kind of like that. I mean, I, I think that's a little harsh, but, you know, it's that sort of seaside town art is how a lot of it looks to me mm -hmm. um so but a lot of it looks pretty cool but probably know. the stuff that looks the coolest is the stuff that it actually stole from an actual artist and mm -hmm. just remixed somehow mm -hmm. yeah 
I do. I have enjoyed watching them. I I never get behind any of these uh, these app trends, but I I've been enjoying it even before it got to the news. But yeah, now it's just tits and ass on my feed, and I'm like, huh. Well, there's kind of your titties. There's kind of your ass. Interesting. It's all 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 all. It seems like all new technology dating back to, <laughs> geez, like probably like the the invention of the you know the pen and pen and pencil or whatever always devolves into <laughs> boobs uh, some kind of porn <laughs> boobs yeah. and wieners how can we use this for porn <laughs> we're simple creatures at the end of the day <laughs> even our ai um <laughs> let me do one more here this is a uh, vic Mignana back in uh troubling behavior oh <laughs> no yeah our boy? This, this is weird uh so Just apparently sort of wiped the right right way and made some better choices <laughs> in life sort of, he was uh, <laughs> he was uh, <laughs> He was. He started out good. <laughs> he was a firm oh <laughs> front to backer, and now he just can't seem to stop. Well, the headline is he apparently exposed his, his little Vic on a recent live stream. Now, here's the deets. Not a ton of details here, but this is coming from CBR, comic book resources, or resource. Twitter uses, or Twitter user Ren Famous posted a video clip of the incident, which occurred on December 5th during what the Post calls an all-female right-wing YouTube stream. Uh, one woman is talking about her pet cat, and Mignana smiles and appears to move his camera. The camera pans down and reveals that Mignana has no trousers on. The stream host mistake, bro. quickly cuts off his video and says, We lost Vic! <laughs> As all three women laugh, the majority of replies on the tweet were appalled, but one of the streamers, Chrissy Mayer, stated that the incident was not that big a deal and it was just a boomer moment. Other replies suggest that the clip may be very unprofessional, but not necessarily sexual harassment. Was so, they full on like mouse out of the house? They like, don't he per naked, naked? perfectly say that, but when they say that he exposed himself, if he was in his undies, I, I, you couldn't call that exposing yourself. So I... They imply that he was, yeah, mouse out of the house, as you, <laughs> as I believe you <laughs> phrased it. But you know, even if it was just his undies, as someone who has been me too, essentially into having no career, just a couple years ago, wouldn't you think he'd go the extra mile yeah. to keep his yeah. nose a little fucking clean, a little yeah. above reproach? Mm -hmm. Like, dude, mm -hmm. you are at this point, you are more known for being sexually inappropriate with young fans than you are for mm -hmm. your voice acting it's your new legacy and maybe flashing yourself on camera on mm -hmm. live stream when it can't be edited out and anybody could be watching of any age <laughs> isn't such a grand fucking idea um mm -hmm. for those of you who don't know we had vic mignana on the podcast that's what we we're sort of hinting at this was on the old podcast and yes we did ask him which direction he wiped and he chose <laughs> right so I had good uh, good hopes for him. I had mm. hopes for him all along. I hoped that these allegations would kind of peter out. Uh, definitely no pun intended. But uh, <laughs> <laughs> but uh, mm. it seems it seems like he he might not be a very good person. And this doesn't uh, go any distance in you know proving otherwise. So yeah, it's a bummer. It is. Uh, that's the Truly. update on Vic Mignana. Mm -hmm. um, I've got a few emails that we've received. Um, what do you mm -hmm. think? Should we should we try to do some weird triv, or should we just uh, save that for when Lyle can join us? Yeah. Let's save it. I, I feel weird doing it with two. Let's just do some stories and yeah. emails Well, and I, shit. I have more. I just didn't want to hog it, and then you guys can weigh in with whatever you want. I did want to read yeah. this before I get to the feedback. I may as well, since we got time now. Um, here's a Kanye West one. Did you see the story where God. He, he's admitted this is actually like the least crazy Kanye story to come out? But I thought it was uh, worth bringing up that he apparently has m said that he likes to fuck shoes. No, I haven't heard this, but wow. Yeah. Again, <laughs> no, least I crazy. Seen that one. <laughs> well, this is from Business Insider. Mm -hmm. uh, a Yeezy employee said Kanye West now known as Ye, frequently compared shoes to sex, according to a new report by Rolling Stone detailing West's alleged management style while working at the Adidas-run company. Rolling Stone spoke with more than a dozen former staff members for Yeezy and Adidas. A high-ranking high high employee 
told the news outlet that during a job interview in 2018, West interrupted a candidate to tell her, we, cre we create products of passion. I literally want to fuck my shoes. That's how good they are. Uh, hyperbole or no, the candidate did not confirm or deny the story, but the employee said West uh, made at least 10 comments to other colleagues about a shoe that West or a Yeezy consumer could ejaculate into. Quote, not a sex toy sneaker, but something that you were so into that you would want to have an intimate relationship. He'd be like, literally, fuck. He would be very clear on what that meant, the uh, former employee said. So there you go. Again, I, it's almost like, <laughs> yeah, it's fucking Kanye. What the fuck is the matter with this guy? What is he doing? <laughs> he was just on Alex Jones with a no neo-Nazi. And uh, I don't know what this guy's Talking going through. About Hitler. Yeah. I don't know what this guy's going through. I don't know if it's a game, if he's really this guy, if he's just crazy from all the fame, too young. Was he always this way? I think a Did lot hear... of people are weighing in <laughs> well, on him, like uh, literally, like psycholo uh, psychologically. He, he, he is bipolar, mm. and by all accounts, he's not being medicated. And there's no one around him that is like, hey, hey, man, maybe you should, you know, do the things you need to do. Yeah. <laughs> you know what I mean? He's like, surrounded Jesus, by yeast. <laughs> he's uh, surrounded by <laughs> sycophants and, and yes people. And um, but he, still he, he, and he still is. That's what's crazy. Like, I yeah. get that 20 years ago, at my, maybe he wasn't quite around. But, you know, 10, 15 years ago when he was really busting out on the scene, he was fucking huge. Yeah, and really well respected, and thought to be this new genius of the new sound and really changing the way of modern music, and he did in a lot of ways. But this does feel like mental illness more than anything. It's interesting because we talk about a lot of these people um, that I think we most of us agree have at least <laughs> troubling opinions and are doing troubling things, and some of them just seem like no, this is this is their politics. I don't agree with yeah. it. I think it's scary. I think it's terrifying where they want the country to go to, but they're just a dipshit. Um, or we just greatly disagree on our political backgrounds, religion, whatever. This seems different. Like I, I have a hard time buying that he's really there, but I don't fucking I, know. Yeah, it seems it seems like he has a, uh, something that's not being treated or managed currently. It's and, sad and, and that's, weird. But that's not like... There's also things that he are saying that has nothing to do with that. It's just like something that is inside him. He really seems to have a problem with Jewish people. And, you know what I mean? And that's not caused by mental illness. You know what I'm saying? Like yeah. those things that he's saying, like that's that's inside him for yeah. whatever reason. Um, it's just that he's saying it because he's not, you know, he has no filter now. So, yeah. And that's where it's tricky because I, you want to acknowledge if there is mental illness afoot. But you don't. You can't just write him a blank check because he's mentally ill and let him get away with what he's saying and what he's doing. Um, but he is he is going down a, a really, really odd and potentially dangerous and scary path. But uh, it'll be interesting to see how it pans out. I just it still blows me away that so many people in my circle of people. <laughs> have no problem following things or listening to things uh, or people that are directly and openly associated with these neo some of these neo nazi people i don't it that blows my mind that we're in a place in 2022 where that's just okay where a lot of people are just like yeah well you know you go they go a little further than i would go but yeah they're saying making some good points i'm like no stop <laughs> you are talking about Nazis, like we we use that word yeah, very loosely like, in a lot of ways. These are legitimate neo Nazis that uh, some yeah. of these people that he was like. I can't remember the name of the dude that he was actually on. Um, I don't know if it was on the Alex Jones interview. I guess he had a, this dinner at Trump's with this dude. Yeah. I can't fucking remember his name, but he's a he's a well known. He's like a proud, outspoken it, white nationalist. It's okay if we don't. It's okay if we don't remember their names or say them. <laughs> yeah, it is. Like, it, it is good don't news. Need to. <laughs> <laughs> but it was like, there you have fucking Trump having these people yeah. over. And I guess um, 
Trump and Kanye got into it at that dinner. Did you guys read any of this? A, a little bit, yeah. Because Kanye, I guess Kanye's considering running for president uh, in the 24 election. And, of course, Trump yeah, has thrown cool his one. hat into the ring. It's like, well, did look, he just pictures them looking across this gaudy gold table. Just like the eyes look like they're joking. And he's like, no, nah, I'm going to run against you and I'm going to beat you. <laughs> yeah, I'm going to beat you. And they just get squinty eyes. <laughs> All of a sudden, there's a the laugh stop. And I guess that's kind of how it went. It sounded like the the dinner did not end well. No. Yeah. Fucking bananas, man. We live in madness. <laughs> we live in. I was just listening to uh, Somewhere in Time, my favorite uh-huh. Maiden album, and uh, the lyrics to the Sea of Madness just get <laughs> better and better. I was thinking about this, John Mark. You know the the tour that Maiden is already pitching for next year looks yeah. to be a hybrid of their latest album and Somewhere in Time. Yep. And I've I've never seen them play many of the Somewhere. In, you know, they always play Wasted Years, but. Yeah, or you, Heaven Can Wait or whatever. Well, uh, do they play Heaven Can Wait? Um, they they haven't in recent times, but they used to. Yeah, Maiden always has, and always has had at least a couple of dud filler songs on their albums. I don't find any of the shit on Somewhere in Time to be filler. I know every word to every one of those songs, and I think they're all catchy. Like the loneliness of the long distance runner. I don't know if they've even yeah. ever played that live. So I'm, I'm sure I they don't haven't think played. They have. yeah. Some of those are Alexander the Great. That's good shit. But I keep wondering if if on this tour they're at least partially focusing on somewhere in time. I bet they're going to pull something out that they'd never performed before. You want to hope, but like I, when it comes to Maiden, like I don't like. I, they're not one of those bands that's just like, yeah. Guess what? Alexander the Great, you know what I mean? It's, yeah. it's, it's going to be like, I have a feeling they're, they're, they, they pretty much stick to the tried and true for the most part. Yeah. So it's going to be like, they'll probably be caught somewhere in time, wasted years, maybe Sea of Madness, um, Heaven Can Wait. Stranger in a Strange Land would be Stranger great. Stranger in a Strange Land. That's probably going to be it. Oh, Stranger but, would be great to see live. I've never seen them play that. Yeah. So. I have a feeling that that's what it's going to be. And that would be fine with me, but it would be cool to yeah. see them play fucking Alexander the Great finally, or even Loneliness of the Long Distance Runner. I, like I would that prefer, song. yeah, I love both those songs. I love all those songs, but Loneliness of the Long Distance Runner um, has some of my favorite guitar harmonies that they've ever done. And, yes, and uh, that record, that whole record has, some. I think, some of Dave and Adrian's best soloing, like, bar none. Mm-hmm. And that was um, when they were doing a lot of the three guitar parts that they couldn't do live until they got Jan uh-huh. on board, and then yeah. they could pull that shit off now. Yep. Yeah, fucking love Absolutely. that album. Fucking love that album. It never, ever, ever gets old. <laughs> I can't tell you how many times I've played that album. Is that your favorite, Maiden, or is it... Uh... It's it's up there. I don't listen to it a lot these days. Um, I probably should, but um, I say that and probably Power Slave. Um, yeah. uh, are my, so like Power Slave, Summer in Time, and even though I, when I initially heard it, like I really did not like Seventh Son of a Seventh Son. Like I was like, what the yeah. fuck is this? It was like, a slow burn for me too. Um, but then like years later, I went back to it and I was like, what the fuck was I thinking? This is a fucking yeah. masterpiece. It um, is. But I think those three for me are like the top and like the, the, you know, Somewhere in Time was the first Maiden album that came out when I was like here in the States with the ability to go buy it when it came out and just like absorb it as soon as it was as soon as it was available to me. You know what I mean? And I already I was already a fan. And that was the first concert I ever saw my favorite band. You know what I mean? And so it's yeah. like it has a special place in my heart. <laughs> like, yeah. Well, you know, I, I love Power Slave, too. I mean, that's probably their ultimate album for most fans. But, you know, I'll take Heaven Can Wait or uh, Deja Vu over Flash of the Blade and The Duelist, you know, some of those other filler songs that yeah. they're good, but, or what was it? There's some on, there's definitely some on uh, Number of the Beast that I've always thought were skippers, but. Yeah. The, I mean, the more I listen to that album, the more I'm like, well, I could do without 22, Acacia Avenue, mm-hmm. Gangland's all right, mm-hmm. um, blah, 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 you know, all that stuff. Yeah. So, uh, I think that's one of the great things about Seventh Son, actually. It's a shorter album for Maiden uh, at that era. I mean, isn't it? It feels like it is anyway. Maybe I it's not. I think it's all like it's eight just, songs. It's it's, like yeah, it just feels more, it, it just feels like uh, everything's perfect. 
no yeah. fillers. Um, but yeah, it didn't uh, it didn't quite jump out at me at the time. I did love. Um, I was a huge Monty Python fan when Can I Play with Madness the video came out, and I was like, "That's fucking King Arthur." <laughs> <laughs> uh, Graham. Uh, oh my god, why am I spacing? That Monty Python. Actor, I know what you're talking about Graham Chapman. Yeah, yeah uh, that's it. Yeah. yeah, who died of alcoholism? I think not long after that. Anywho, <clears throat> well, should I read a little bit of uh, feedback and then we can just kind of shoot the shit or wherever you guys want to go? I have sure. a, I, I have a story. Well, let's uh, do it. Just a small story. Um, so I don't know if you guys have seen this. I just saw this recently. Um, there's a story uh, that the city of New York is looking for a rat lord. <laughs> <laughs> and it sounds so, like someone who runs a D and D game. Yeah, so that, Rat that Lord couldn't make it, it. He was ill that tonight. That was literally what it said in the fucking headline. Like New York City seeks Rat Lord. Um, so, as I'm sure that you are probably aware, New York has had a quite a, a an issue with with rats for a long time now. And I think that's even been said that there's more rats living in New York than there are people. Um, I wouldn't yeah, like the biomass. I think the biomass of rats to people in in New York is is in favor of the rats. Great. Um, but um, so they have done all kinds of things with varying levels of of success. None of it great to try to curb the rat population in New York. And the the problem, the main problem is, is that it seems like there's like I think like th- basically up to like three different. Um, um, groups or jurisdictions of people that are are doing or are, are partaking in these efforts, but they're not really coordinated. So, so they're looking for someone um, that they're going to pay. I think it was like so the salary was like one hundred seventy thousand a year, um, and with like uh, I don't know if they specified what sort of like um, uh, education you had to have, but um, they want this person, this rat lord, to sort of like. Um, be the person who can combine all the various uh, efforts that they're doing to curb the rats and sort of like channel their forces into like one program that might eventually have some real effect on on curbing this problem um so you know if anybody's looking for for a job an interesting job and wants to move to new york state um, and become a rat lord uh, that's out there. <laughs> this is a good premise for some sort of Willard-esque horror movie because what if the Rat Lord becomes the actual Rat Lord and he's like, oh, yeah. these are my these are my people. <laughs> yeah. I tried well, you, to solve the problem. It turns out the problem is you. Yeah. Well, we've all heard of the Rat rat King, but uh, <laughs> now we have the, the possibility of a Rat Lord. What do they expect them to do? Um, I think the main I think the main thing is just to kind of like – get everybody on the same page because there's like different departments doing different stuff and no one's really talking to each other about like what they're doing and mm-hmm. when. So it's like more of like a core more of a rat kind czar. Of like project manager. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Rat czar, rat Lord czar, <laughs> rat CEO. Yeah. yeah. Sure. Organize the gang. <laughs> I don't think there's, I don't think there's nothing doing until we invent some sort of weapon that just can be tuned into a frequency that can kill a specific <laughs> type of animal. Yeah. I don't think there's nothing doing that because <clears throat> I never, I never saw a rat until I went to L.A. for the first time in, like, 2003. They were all over there. I was like, wow, they do exist. <laughs> They're like some exotic animal. Now I've got rats <laughs> all over my fucking house. That, well, not at my house, but uh, my yard. They showed up when I got chickens. Uh, yep, I haven't seen them do. in a while. But it's like now I just I see rats every now and again. But it was a big deal the first time I saw a rat. We got mice, yeah. sure, and all sorts of rodents, all sorts of critters. Never rats. The, over the last 10 years, the rat problem even here, and I'm sure over on the west side, has just quadrupled. So it is a problem because, you know, they eat <laughs> animal food. They kill some of our pets. They kill some of our uh, livestock. I have heard stories of them killing chickens. Mm-hmm. I would take my chickens against the rats, though. Man, if, Chickens I, are fucking savage. They're fucking, they fucking they are insane. I I will never forget one of the first times when Sarah was taking when she lived downstairs, she was taking care of the chickens and she told me that they got a mouse. I was like, "What the, well, what the fuck are they going to do with the mouse?" I yeah. saw it <laughs> happen uh, not long after that. What <laughs> some fucking funny thing ever. There's so one chicken 
you know how tiny their beaks are, and this is a fat mouse. This poor thing was just like hanging out of this beak, uh, securely chopped, but alive, and thinking, well, this sucks. And th- yeah. this one chicken was running around like crazy. All oh, four other chickens were chasing it. Like, give me that. What the fuck you got there? That, that was interesting <laughs> as fuck. And that chicken got on top of the coop with mouse in its beak. And it, I swear it looked right at me. He's like, you want to see what a chicken can do, bitch? <laughs> it swallowed. It just like lifted up his beak. And I saw a chicken's beak do something I'd never seen it do. It stretched like a fucking... Uh, like some sort of gull, <laughs> like a pelican or something, and it swallowed that mouse whole, one swallow, and I was like, Jesus Christ! <laughs> like I had, I, I've to this day, I haven't looked at chickens the same way. It was like they are. Well, we have to remember ruthless. that they're little fucking dinosaurs, man. And at they one point are. in in Earth's history, the most vicious, um, successful predator was a fucking giant ass bird yeah they're tough too because we had one that was getting bullied by the other chickens so badly that we thought she was just a fucking goner like holy shit what are you doing to this bird like you could see inside its insides they had pecked (laughs) its feathers off into her little soul so i got some medicine put it on there and that chicken is still out there she still looks bad because she's still the bully uh, the one that gets bullied um but she's alive and that flesh grew back there was another one <laughs> that I had to move to a different kennel, um, and she looked even worse. She she wasn't pecked like that badly, but she was down to like almost no feathers. She was tiny. Mm-hmm. I was like, you poor fucking thing. I got to get you out of here. And I moved her to one of my old dog kennels. And for almost a year, she was by herself, just healing, getting better. I tried to reintegrate her to the other chickens. <sighs> Nothing fucking doing. They tried to kill her immediately. <laughs> so I got her buddy that... Um, you know, there are two blues, two reds, and two browns. <laughs> so I got her buddy the other blue, and thank God they took to each other. Um, so they live together up in the, uh, mm. they keep each other warm on these nine degree nights. Yeah. But I was, between the the mouse being swallowed whole and seeing what these chickens w- can withstand, they are fucking rugged. When I was helping my dad build a fence once, I he has a bunch of chickens, and I just saw one that was just like sitting in a weird spot. I was like, what the fuck is that chicken doing there? And I looked down, and uh, it had stepped in one of my dad's rat traps. Oh, its no. entire leg was, like, folded in half by this oh, rat yeah. trap. And I'm like, Jesus Christ. Ah. <laughs> like, that poor fucking thing is going to need to be put down. And my dad's like, oh, shoot. So he let it loose, and it went hobbling off. We went back to working on the fucking fence. Five minutes later, that thing was walking around like normal and just eating shit off the ground. I was like... These fucking birds <laughs> are pretty yeah. impressive. Crazy. Chickens are uh, a whole different thing. If you, I really like having chickens. I think they're fucking funny. They follow me around the yard when I let them out, and they're uh, they're fun to hang out with. But they are <laughs> intimidating. If these things were even three or four times their size, I would be terrified yeah. of them. Oh, fuck terrified. yeah, dude. Yeah. <laughs> they would rule the world. Yeah. Size does matter in the animal kingdom, does it not? No. But rats... Rat Lord. Well, not a bad doom. The Rat Lord of New York City. Doom slash punk band name. Yeah. Rat Lord. Rat Lord. So that, okay, so the story, uh, I was telling telling Jen this story, and that made me think of, you you know, um, Ron, you probably know, I don't know, um, you know, the... um, one of the, I think it was like probably like first wave kind of sort of black metal type bands, uh, black metal, Viking metal, Bathory. You know the band Bathory? Mm-hmm. Yeah. I don't know much so, of the music, but I know of them. So, so they have this classic logo, which is, is the word Bathory. And it's in this very sort of like ornate sort of old English looking um, typeface. Mm-hmm. And there was a meme that was going around a while ago that I don't know if it was a legitimate like post that somebody had made to sell this T-shirt or if it was that somebody had had seen it and looked at it in a certain way and just made it to look and, and turn it into a meme. But it had um, so it's like a T-shirt with the, the Bathory uh, logo and then like one of their pieces of artwork, which is like sort of like a, a, a version of Baphomet. Right. Yeah. And, and it good. said uh, and it said like, um, you know, black metal uh, T-shirt, Rat Lord, 
um, <laughs> for sale. And if you look at if you look at the the Bathory logo in a certain way, it does look like it says Rat Lord or Bat Lord instead it of Bathory. Just does. the way it's written. <laughs> Yeah, I that was funny. Everything looks perfect except the B. The B, you got to use a little bit more imagination. A little imagination, yeah. But yeah, the the Y <laughs> absolutely at the end looks like a D. <laughs> Bad Lord. <laughs> <laughs> well, you got your theme. Yeah. Yeah. I just don't, I don't know. That seems like a uh, a job no one would want. I would rather be one of that dude in Thailand's uh, mistresses at 342 pounds. That has Honestly, to be. What does that mean? Three hundred and forty-two pounds. So that's like four hundred. Well, they didn't specify bucks. if that's per week or per month, or if that's or thousand, per year, or per thousand. hour, or mm-hmm. uh, you know, I don't know. But yeah, mm-hmm. <laughs> per session. I don't know how that translates. This <laughs> man alive. I am dying to know how that story turns out. I will do my best to remember to keep up on it, which is not my best. Is not very best. <laughs> there are certainly better bests than mine. Speaking of Chumbawamba, I did uh, the video that I was watching before we got on, Chris, you know, had the subtitles. Mm-hmm. And, of course, it said the correct lyric, which we, this is, the whole <sighs> reason we ended up getting Danbert No Bacon on the show was because we were arguing about, I thought it was, uh, he sings the songs that remind him of the good times, he sings the songs that remind him of the best times. No. Chris said it was better, and I was like, no way it's better. I listened to, I listened over and over again. Well, Danbert confirmed it was better. But he does say it kind of kooky. The better times. <laughs> so it does sort of come off as best. <laughs> um, I do concede the loss, but only barely. But I thought it was funny that <laughs> I had the lyrics right in front of me there on that video. <laughs> and uh, John Mark, I was telling Chris before you got on that Danbert No Bacon is in drag in that video throughout most of it and I don't know how I missed that huh. I mean it doesn't surprise me <laughs> I did, he's performed at my place in somewhat drag but I never noticed that before he's the bald seen guy with the megaphone years. most of the video yeah. anywho well uh, anything else you guys want to throw out before I get on to just a few but very interesting feedback let's do the feedback this is from Gina uh, she says, hey guys, been listening for a long time and I thought I'd write for the first time. One, because you always whine about not getting feedback. <laughs> <laughs> thanks, Gina. Well, <laughs> and also thanks. Uh, but two, because I have something to say. So years back, I remember my boyfriend and I were in the car listening to the show. He actually got me into you guys. Uh, And Ron was talking about open relationships and why his philosophy leans toward that kind of arrangement. I never thought much about it one way or the other, honestly, but my boyfriend scoffed and made a big deal of the idea, thinking that that kind of thing never works. And uh, he said something to the tune of, we are meant to be monogamous. Well, dot, 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 last month he cheated on me. Oh, boy. I caught him in the act in our bed, no less. No, no. That's as bad as it gets. Does he still listen, you think? Is he like... (laughs) (laughs) Well, you know what? If he does, I don't care. Fuck you. Fuck you, dude. (laughs) He could have done it in someone else's bed. Uh, No, that's as bad as it gets, right? I mean, when you find out that you've been cheated on, there's no good way to find that out, but that is absolutely the worst way. Mm -hmm. Walking into your own fucking bed and finding them in the act. Uh, Goes on to say, neat, huh? And I found out it had been going on for a long time. This is something that I've heard a lot lately, that a lot of people have found out about affairs that were going on for a long time. Double double gut punch, for sure. Uh, so for some reason, while processing all this, that memory popped into my head that he scoffed at you for saying many monogamous relationships end in one or multiple affairs. Guess he was protesting too much. Anyway, mm. keep up the good show. We all look forward to it. Love, Gina. Damn, Gina. Uh, Damn, Gina. Yeah, that is... That's brutal. <laughs> I appreciate you sharing it, and I hope you are coping with that as well as you possibly can. Um, and yeah, if you're dickhead X, 
I'm assuming he's your ex, uh, is listening. Yeah, fuck you. <laughs> Listen, I've been in shitty situations. I've done shitty things. But I don't do them anymore, so I'm in a place where I can say fuck you. I'm better than you now. <laughs> uh, <laughs> I'm above you. <laughs> Risen. Uh, anyway. And I'm rising. Oh, yeah, huh. yeah, monogamy. Um, God, it's just a fucking... I don't know. I, I, I still... I still have a hard time just parking in any one lane. And I think that's part of my problem with monogamy. But my problem with, it's sort of like atheism. Like even if I question what I believe at different periods of my life, it doesn't mean I want to completely write off the idea of any kind of God or any of of the spiritual things that I, at one point, kind of connected to. Mm -hmm. I don't want to write anything off. And and it's, it's a similar thing with monogamy. Like I... Uh, you know, had some recent monogamy relationships. They weren't terribly long relationships, but they were good. I didn't, I didn't struggle. There weren't days where I was like, fuck monogamy. But uh, there were times when I was like, this is, um, this is part of the problem. You know, like this part that there are things that have nothing to do with the sex aspect that is just that I don't like that. I personally don't like, which are normal things, I think, for a lot of relationships, which are expectations <laughs> and, uh, you know, certain a certain understanding that things will progress or keep going, not just going as they are, but progress and will advance and that you will, you know, more and more time or uh, maybe planning a home think, together or, you know, where I'm yeah. more like, I'm actually OK like this. Uh, and I don't feel like I'm a monster for just being OK with how things are. Um, but that's hard. I I find that hard to do in a monogamous situation. Um, I think the fact of the matter is that relationships are different for everybody. Yeah. And As everybody has to have, it is. And everybody has to have their own sort of way of going about things. And you need to find people that you can connect with that are on the same wavelength. Mm-hmm. And it's not always easy to do that, but that's, that's what you have to do. And it's not going to be the same for everyone. You know, it's just, that's just how it is. Well, my current situation is that I am trying to date on you know date people ongoing and have these closer more special more reliable relationships like a monogamous you and me versus the world situation while still maintaining uh, elements of non-monogamy and it's not any less tricky (laughs) it's probably more tricky but You know, I've talked ad nauseum on the show. Probably not this one as much as the last one. Uh, I'm sure the one she's referring to goes way back, uh, at least a few, several years. But I've talked about how I was at just one point not interested in any aspect of a relationship. But looking for other people who weren't (laughs) looking for a relationship uh, any more than I was and just hooking up, you know, I was just like, uh, the occasional fuck buddy or the occasional has some ongoing relationships, but those were ongoing fuck buddies. Really? I mean, you know, I considered them relationships, relationships at the time, but they were pretty surface level. They weren't meaningless by, they certainly weren't meaningless to me. Um, but I kind of, I, I did that. I lived that life and, it didn't seem like a simple life. Um, <laughs> you know, there, that got complex too because people develop feelings even with those stipulations, with those constructs, no matter what you say. And this is one thing that I've kind of been coming to terms with is like I can I can stand on my uh, soapbox and say, well, look, I laid out the rules and the guidelines in those early days, but I do understand that that's not really how the heart works. You know, and you do sort of progress and you you grow together in certain ways. And suddenly this thing that you stated seven months ago on your first or second date just kind of falls into the the (laughs) the fog. And if you don't really keep up on that and keep that mentality uh, part of regular conversations, that, that that's on me. You know, it's not on them. It's not like they failed to heed my warning it's more like I just kind of stopped stating my own needs and my own wants and got maybe wrapped up at at least to some degree in the idea of a relationship even if I knew somewhere in the back of my head that maybe I'm not right for this and 
it always ends in hurt. It's just that I, I haven't found any non-tricky way to navigate it, and maybe there is no non-tricky way. I'm not looking for easy. Uh, I have no problem going through hard things with people. I'm good at having hard talks. I'm good at sharing my feelings when I'm asked. <laughs> it's another thing that I've had a recent awakening to. I'm curious where you guys are with this. When, what do you mean? Like, um, like, do you, you don't share very well if you don't, I don't, I don't think I share at all unless I'm, mm. per, unless I'm asked. Hmm. I, I am a very silent, I'm an efficient processor, but I need to be alone. I need, and I do it in my head. Um, there are people who process, you know, it's like, they have to talk it out. They, th talking it out is their version of processing. If I haven't had time to just catch my breath a little bit in any kind of scenario, not even relationships, just like business partners with friendships, with family, you know, if there's some sort of heated thing, if I'm not, if I don't have space to just process it in my head and cool down a little bit, I can tell you it's not going anywhere because I will burn it the fuck down. <laughs> like, you got to give me that space I haven't been as good at giving other people what they need, um, which is communicating and talking. I'm a good listener when they bring it to me, but that's my point is that they, they kind of have to bring it to me. Uh, maybe I don't check in like I should. Well, I definitely don't check in like I should. I'm, I'm really an out of sight, out of mind kind of guy. Not in so much like, Oh, this person isn't in my room. So I don't think of them. It's not like that at all. I think about people that I'm in a relationship with all the time. I just don't really, I don't have that, um, that thing that makes me just sort of, I don't openly share and it doesn't occur to me to, it doesn't occur to me that they would even want that. Um, you maybe, need a, you, you need a say you need a safety net. <clears throat> you say so your word. Guar. This is, this is, this is something that we actually do at my, my current job, um, in, all the different teams, um, when they first get together, uh, develop a safety net and everyone just says, I, I need, this is what I need to feel like, Oh, this is, this is how I do things. And this is what I need to feel like. Um, it's okay for me to say what I need to do or do what I need to do hmm. to, to be a productive member of this team or whatever like that. You know, so, so some, some people it's like, I use humor to process things. I need to be able to like, listen to something and then sit with it for a while and then come back later. You know what I mean? Everyone has their own thing. Um, and so it's something that we always go over. It's like any additions to this, anything that anyone wants to add or is there anything you need to bring up, you know what I mean? Yeah. Um, before each meeting. And I think that's like, I think that would be like beneficial in everybody's in all aspects of life, honestly. <laughs> yeah. I like that. You know who we need to get on this show. You know how I've been working on this uh, seminar, this massive project for the local film company. It's a seminar that this dude does, and he goes to businesses, and he talks about things like this. He talks about every aspect of business, good communication via email, but also the interpersonal. A lot of it is this interpersonal stuff, and he, he talks at, at great lengths about how we process differently. Well, there's one, one way is expedient. I can't remember what the... Maybe it's just the other one is processor. There's a processors and expedients. Expedients are the kind of people that want to talk about it. They get it all out in the open. Let's sit down and hash this out in the heat of the moment. And then there's processors like me that give me a minute. Um, I'm going to go <laughs> for a little walk, get in my head and figure some things out. Think what I want to say. Think maybe here's what usually happens when I do that. I'm usually like, oh, yeah, that was a dickhead thing to say. I usually come like... Uh, dickhead thing for me to say i will usually get to a place really quickly where i can acknowledge my fuck-ups but if i'm not allowed to do that and someone's in my face and they just want to hash it out now i'm not going to get to that place yeah i'm the same way the you so you need you need you're a processor then you're not an experience uh, I, I certainly can't be I, me. I no i uh if i'm heated especially like if, if i'm upset about something or I, mean, I just need a little time to reset and let yeah. my emotions like fucking chill out for a second and get my wits about me well, what, it, what about you guys? Do you guys, like if something's on your mind, even if it's relationship-wise, do you tend to work them out in your head or do you do you share those, oh, no. do you automatically share those feelings with uh, your significant other? I am an over-communicator. I don't know if that's, <laughs> I don't know if that's a thing. I think you can under-communicate. I don't, what do you mean by that? 
Uh, sometimes I think I am annoying with how much I'm sharing about that stuff. It's like, <laughs> I just, I have to, like, if I'm feeling upset about something, I'm going to fucking tell you. Yeah. Or, you know, this or that. But if you well, didn't, that's good. it would be I like me. Good. That was, see, that's the thing is like, you, that's the compromise aspect of it. Like if you didn't get what you feel like you need to get, you would be denying yourself what sure. you need to do. And that's going to ultimately be worse for anyone that you're having this discussion with and again this isn't just about relationships this this goes well they're all relationships but you know not just your partner i kind of have to think about stuff for a while and then if it's something that i you know what i mean it's like i'll get to a certain point where it's like okay i have to bring this up you know what i mean Mm -hmm. um but if it's if it's really important i won't just like sit there and ignore it and be like god because you know obviously you have to say something at some point otherwise nothing's ever going to you know be resolved so well i'm glad you said ignore because that's something that i don't do that's something that i get accused of doing though a lot and i understand why it probably looks like that but what i've done is actually (laughs) i guess you could say i found peace with it um there are certain things that you can't change in another person or in your interactions with each other. There's certain things that you just know, well, that's this person. I know sometimes Chris is going to tell me way more than I want to fucking hear. He mm-hmm. never does that. You never done that to me. Uh, although we've, <laughs> I don't think we've had many fights in our past. <laughs> no, uh, we really haven't had many. No. Um, but, you know, whatever it is, it's like, you have to, it's, it's just like, that's all part of what you have to do. But, um, yeah, I don't know. It's interesting. I would love to get that dude on here because we could have like a whole, uh, hour discussion on this shit. <laughs> He's really good at what he does. It's, it's geared toward businesses, but the whole time I was watching, you know, I, I mean, I saw his entire fucking 12 hour sem- seminar like three or four times. And he's so good at it, and he makes so many good points that translate, again, into all relationships. Uh, His name is Mike Nash. He's a local guy, but he's, you know, pretty well known, even outside of the region, for doing what he does. And I know he would would be on the show. He's a good guy. He's a cool guy. And I never got tired of listening to him talk because he uses a lot of real-world stories. It's it's never, like, luxury, you know? It's just like, here's how we are. He'll, He'll tell you where... He fucks up in certain parts of the conversation, and it, it kind of it's kind of like therapy uh, as much as it is how to uh, you know successfully navigate relationships. And a lot of what he talks about is a lot of the same philosophies in the the book that I recommend everybody read, which is How to Win Friends and Influence People. And I've talked about this book before, and I know that that's a, a semi douchey, maybe even semi creepy. <laughs> title but all that book is about is true empathy it's all about all these different ways you can try to understand where the other person is in any in any given minute so before you go in there all guns a blazing and just burn the whole fucking thing down which a lot of us do you know really try to process it through them where would you want to be if you were them like where would you want this other person coming into the room starting the conversation at and just trying to get on their level best you can. Um, there's a lot of that. And I, I've, I've said this before. I think that book, How to Win Friends and Influence People, should be mandatory reading <laughs> in fucking high school. Younger than that, you wouldn't quite appreciate uh, the benefits. But everyone should read that book because it changed my life. It changed the way it's, you know, how to... It's not how to win an argument. It's not how to best anything or how to con somebody out of uh, or into a new car it's but all of those it because it works for a lot of those things empathy works because empathy is sort of the way it's the golden rule is all it is um but it's hard in those moments where you're you're fired up it's really hard in relationships when you get fired up because you you can get so fucking just hyper focused on your partner you know when it's just like and we, we do have a tendency of just piling on. Like if we've had a bad day at work, bad day of traffic, usually our partner to some degree is going to get some of that brunt and it's not their fault at all. Even that simple realization is something that we should all try to take with us before we go in guns a blazing on. Because there's sometimes you say things, 
you can't unsay. <laughs> and maybe it doesn't destroy your relationship, but it's there. It's out there. You can't take it back ever. That person heard it. They they, and then they have to process what you meant by it and if, if that's how you really feel and maybe it wasn't maybe it's just something you said to hurt because it feels good to hurt somebody when you're angry complicated shit wow we got deep deep there yeah we did there we go. then you send your checks to ron at born no radar station art at gmail.com speaking of which we haven't plugged the patreon in a while um which is fair we haven't been on in a while <laughs> But we do still have a Patreon. If you like what you hear, you can uh, donate a little to the cause at patreon.com slash tales from the space pod. Just recently met a couple people who discovered the podcast. They haven't gone back to listen to all of Tales from the Space Pod, but they started. They didn't want to hear the most recent episode of How Bizarre. They went back to episode one and they're getting caught up. Which is makes me feel a lot better than knowing they're going back to Tales from the Space Pod. Whew. Some stuff back there. Anyway, I'm sorry, I'm rambling. <laughs> we got well, I guess feedback? I wasn't cutting you off anyway. <laughs> it's, it's okay. <laughs> I just wanted to make sure you guys didn't have. Yeah, we have a couple yeah. more feedbacks. Uh, anyway, thank you for that, Gino. <laughs> Bet you didn't know you get 20 minutes on it. Uh, next, Carrie asks Have any of you ever done something cool but gross? <laughs> That you just had to share with someone? Gosh, <laughs> had a kid. <laughs> well, you know what? Thanks, Gary, for that. My mind immediately went to like all my dipshit buddies who used to call me into the bathroom to show me how big of a turd they just dropped. <laughs> um, I guess yeah. for me, I mean, if I'm following the rules, I guess I... I mean, a few times I had to tell somebody how far I shot my load. <laughs> Just guess. There was one instance where it was fucking nuts. <laughs> Pun intended. Uh, I mean, well, I had... How far? Now I'm intrigued. Like, we're, we're, we're... I had one witness. This wasn't a masturbatory thing. Oh, I did have one witness, and she was like, Jesus Your Christ. Your mom was like, Jesus Christ, Ron. <laughs> Son, <laughs> we've got to get you to church. You, you must have pulled a muscle. Good ice on it. Uh, how far? Holy water. I don't know how far, but it, it did. We measured. It hit a wall six feet away, and it was on full journey. So it, it's, 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 it's true. Speed. It's true trip yeah. could not be <laughs> honestly tallied. Mm -hmm. But it cleared six feet uh, to get there. Um, that's, that's the best I could do, Gary. That's a great question. I'm dying to know if you guys have anything off the top of your head. Something I'm, gross you did that you just had to share. I can't top light speed jizz. <laughs> <laughs> can't top I'm, six feet. I'm trying to mid journey. I'm trying to think of what that would even be. Watch uh, your rattling, Jim Mark. Because we want to no. know. <laughs> <laughs> well, no. We, we all expect it. <laughs> uh, I can't think of anything like that. Yeah. I'm, hmm. It is. Hmm. I had to, I had time to think about it because I read the email earlier, but. Yeah, it is a hard thing to answer on the spot. Well, that came, uh, came to me. Let quick. me let me let me think about that and get back to you guys okay. next you, next cast. All right, you both think about that. Uh, we'll move on. Devin says, "Hey, how bizarre, folks! Really enjoyed the episode. Rob the Undertaker was on, and I looked up that company uh, that turns mm. loved ones' ashes into stones. We talked about it Martin again last Stone, week." Yeah. Uh, we have an old dog in our family that won't be around too much longer, and I was curious if they did this for pets, and as it turns out, you can, as Chris mentioned. Uh, so that's our plan for Old Chief when hey, he awesome. departs this world. What a cool idea, he says. Uh, or they, I got a great idea. Well, how about you send me one of your chiefs, and I'll send you one of my dad. We'll oh. do a little, like a little card game. Get a fucking stone trading <laughs> circuit going here. <laughs> that's Kind of an interesting idea. <laughs> no, it's not. <laughs> I could uh, totally see collecting all, <laughs> all twelve. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah, you could make a little like shelf um, <laughs> graveyard. <laughs> it's kind of, <laughs> kind of morbid, kind of cool, kind of. Uh, you know what I was thinking about with these stones? You're familiar with the uh, concept of worrying stones, right? No. A worrying stone is just a, a stone. I. I, I don't, I don't, maybe it's like a indigenous, like a Native American thing, but I used to see them at barter fairs. They were just little stones that had been sort of uh, hammered out. So there was like a thumb sized 
indentation in it and it was like smooth and glossy they they were made to look pretty but i've also seen people make their own worrying stones and the idea is you just pick the stone up and you just kind of gently rub your thumb oh it's just it's kind of like a fit uh uh what are they called? Fidget, fidget spinner. Fidget spinner before fidget spinners is the idea where you just sort of get something in your hand. You're sort of doing slight movements. It's meditative. Uh, instead of praying the rosary or fidgeting your spinner, <laughs> you can sort of gently rub the worrying stone. Some people call them prayer sto- stones. But I was wondering, I wonder if you could combine the two. You definitely wouldn't want to rub a stone of ashes that's going to come unstowed. <laughs> you know, it's like I suddenly got charcoal on your hand. Mm-hmm. Yeah. But uh, I wonder if you could combine the two to you because there's something definitely symbolic about that. Like I'm gonna I'm gonna meditate on old chief's stone. Or, you know, the old yeah. man. Yeah. Again, I, it's all morbid, I suppose, and kooky idea. But anyway, thanks for sharing that, Devin. And yeah, I think that this. I got a feeling that a lot of people might even be more interested in doing this for pets than they would their loved ones. Um, I could be wrong about that, but hmm. I think either way, it's a cool idea and sure. a stone of, of your pets. Uh, but I do like the idea of trading, <laughs> especially <laughs> like Chris mentioned, some of these come out in slightly different tones, sheens and or colors. Uh, so you could get a whole array. I don't think they very, they very, uh, you're not going to get like a rainbow up there on your mantle, but some variation and you know, putting a few together side by side, you'd probably really see that be interesting. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Anywho, well, that's all the feedback I got other than, again, uh, constant mentions of tune. Uh, most people <laughs> most people are on Team Tune. Team Tune. We uh, really enjoyed the who chat, knew? but uh, <laughs> who knew? <laughs> I'm, down, I'm down with it. Yeah, it does... Uh, it, it slides right off. Okay. Yeah. Anywho, well, that's all I got. Unless uh, any of y'all have something you want to throw down, or we can just get mm-hmm. on out of here. Let's get on out of here, but let's talk about, let's see, next week. Uh, is next week a magazine week? No. Uh, next okay. week is, we'll definitely uh, want to do a show. Perfect. Okay. Well, I'll be ready. We're ready to rock. Okay, we're gonna try to get uh, some listeners on board, or you think we'll need more than? I'm gonna try to schedule that, but we could also get somebody just on to have some fun with us too. Yeah. All right. Well, hopefully the Lyleister is (laughs) at least close to being on his way home. But hopefully uh, he makes it. (laughs) (laughs) He's not gonna make it. He's not gonna make it. (laughs) All right, John. Well, tune in next week. We will be talking about 9/11. Night, guys. See ya. Bye. Bye. Logan, you want to say hi to Uncle Ronnie? No? Okay, cool. <laughs> All right. Well, I'm going to blame that on the sickness. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah. He's sick as fuck. <laughs>